Hi there. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? Or are the Northern Lights something that you hope to see in your lifetime? There's been much excitement in the UK over the last couple of weeks. Unusually, people have been able to see the Northern Lights in all sorts of locations in the UK. The other name for this phenomenon, the Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll probably know that name of the spectacular light show, which can sometimes be seen in the night sky at Northern Latitudes. That means in the far north. If you come from the Southern Hemisphere, that means the southern half of the Earth, then you may be more familiar with the Aurora Australis or the Southern Lights. Let's talk today about this phenomenon of the Northern Lights, why it's happening, all while doing your English language practice. There's some scientific vocabulary in this podcast, some vocabulary about folklore and tales around the Northern Lights, all designed to hold your interest while you do your English listening practice. Adept English, we aim to be more interesting than your average English language podcast. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So the name, first of all, Aurora Borealis. If you've listened to previous Adept English podcasts, then you'll know that I love languages. I love understanding words in language. And my first degree was in Latin. So I like to understand names. Aurora Borealis, Aurora, A-U-R-O-R-A. In Greek mythology, Aurora was the goddess of dawn. Dawn, D-A-W-N. It means the first light of the day when the sun comes up in the morning. That's dawn. So we might talk about the first light of dawn or we might talk about the dawn chorus. That means the birds singing first thing in the morning. And Borealis, B-O-R-E-A-L-I-S. Well, again, in Greek mythology, Boreas was the name for the north wind. So I guess literally Aurora Borealis is dawn of the north or of the north wind. And Australis, the name given to the southern lights, as in the country name Australia. Australis means of the south or southern. And the related name of the southern wind, Australis, comes not from the Greek, but from the Roman. In Roman mythology, the god of the southern wind was Austros. Good to have a bit of etymology, where names come from, including the name of Australia. I also like how Greek and Roman mythology creep sometimes into scientific names. So let's go scientific now. What's going on scientifically? with the Aurora Borealis. So how frequently the northern lights appear depends on the level of activity of the sun. What's happening to create this amazing light show? 80 miles above the earth, particles from the sun are being captured, taken into the earth's atmosphere. Lots of vocabulary here. A particle, P-A-R-T-I-C. L-E, that means a tiny, tiny amount of something, a speck. Here, material from the sun. And these solar particles are ejected, thrown out. They're thrown out so far by the sun that they actually arrive in our atmosphere. That's atmosphere, A-T-M-O-S-P-H-E-R-E. And the Earth's atmosphere is the oxygen and nitrogen and other gases which surround our planet. That's our atmosphere. So these tiny solar particles travel great distances. Solar, S-O-L-A-R, just means of the sun. Once these solar particles reach the Earth's atmosphere, they get caught up in the magnetic field. That's M-A-G-N-E-T-I-C, magnetic. And they bump into or collide C-O-L-L-I-D-E, with other gases in our atmosphere. So they heat up and it's these heated particles that glow. They dance and make patterns in our night sky. 
often green, but it can be other colours as well. And this is what makes such a beautiful spectacle that people gather to watch. I'm about to give you some stories and folklore around the Northern Lights. But before I do that, don't forget that you can help Adept English either by giving us a five-star review or by sharing our podcast, especially on Spotify. Doing this helps Adept English reach more people. Thank you for doing that. And if you're finding our podcast difficult to understand, then you might benefit from our most common 500 words course. This course gives you great listening practice at the most common words in English. These words make up a high percentage of English conversation. So that course is really worthwhile. Find it at adeptenglish.com on our courses page. Back to the topic. Around the Northern Hemisphere, there is a lot of folklore around the Northern Lights. Folklore, F-O-L-K, L-O-R-E. This means the stories of old that people made up to explain natural phenomena like the Northern Lights, things for which there was no scientific understanding at the time. Folklore is similar to mythology, M-Y-T-H-O-L-O-G-Y. And mythology is like what I've already mentioned, the myths of the Greeks and the Romans, including Boreas being the North Wind. That's mythology. If there's a difference, folklore is more at a local level, perhaps. Some examples of myths and folklore around the Northern Lights. When you witness them, apparently it's such an experience that it's understandable that people made up stories to explain them. In Inuit culture, The Northern Lights were believed to be the spirits of the dead playing a football game. The story goes with a walrus skull. A walrus, W-A-L-R-U-S, is an animal, a big animal with tusks, a little bit like a seal, I suppose. And a skull, S-K-U-L-L, that's the round ball of bone that makes up your head. So the story goes, it's spirits playing football perhaps with a walrus skull. But the Inuit people of Nunivak Island turned this around and suggested that the Northern Lights were the spirits of walruses kicking around a human skull as a game. In Greenland, it was believed that the Northern Lights were the spirits of children who died early. And the indigenous people of Alaska, that's A-L-A-S-K-A, they thought that the Northern Lights were the spirits of dead animals, animals that they had hunted. And there are many more stories to explain the Northern Lights. So people are joyful at being able to see the Northern Lights in some locations in the UK at the moment. Enthusiastic even. And the Northern Lights have been seen as far south as Cornwall. This is really unusual. The Northern Lights are best viewed with no cloud cover, no light pollution and with little or no moon and facing north. But why are the Northern Lights happening more than usual at the moment and being seen in places where they're not usually seen? Well, part of the reason is that the sun has an 11-year cycle, a solar cycle. And the cycle, C-Y-C-L-E, in this context means a process that repeats. It's on a loop, if you like. And the level of the sun's activity varies during this 11-year cycle. So there are years when the sun is very active and we see a lot of what we call solar flares. That's F-L-A-R-E-S. That means lots of particles are emitted. And there are periods in this solar cycle when the level of activity is much lower. So we are coming into a period of time in the solar cycle where the sun is more active. And the Northern Lights have recently been seen in the UK much more because apparently there was a huge solar flare which left the sun and travelled to Earth, taking around two days before it collided with the Earth's atmosphere. So it's far less unusual to see the Northern Lights in Scotland 
than to see them in Cornwall. Where would you go if you want to see the Northern Lights for yourself? Well, people from the UK tend to travel to Iceland for this. If you go in the winter time, you've a greater chance of seeing the Northern Lights, but then you also have the very short days and very cold temperatures. If you go to Iceland in the summertime, you'll experience the very long days, the Arctic summer nights, but of course you're less likely to see the Northern Lights at that time of year. Either way, Iceland is an experience though. Other places where the Northern Lights are frequently seen, Norway, Finnish Lapland and Canada. And just before I finish, if you fancy a really good story about the Arctic Circle, Michelle Paver's book, Dark Matter, that is a really spooky read. Spooky, S-P-O-O-K-Y, means it'll have you scared while you're reading it. And that book tends to make you feel pleased if you live in a place where there's lots of light and sunshine. So listen to this podcast a number of times. It's got some really good, useful vocabulary used in context to help you remember it. Listen to it a number of times until you understand all the words. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.